In the first video, I demonstrated how to build a game like RuneScape from scratch. So welcome to part two, where we will continue that development. By the end of the video, you will see a multiplayer gameplay with the ability to move players anywhere on the island, as well as animations that start and stop. So follow me on this journey. So I started creating a ton of network code, such as the client gate, which is responsible for accepting clients and passing them into the game server. I also created some abstract network stream classes that allow us to easily send packets later in development. After some time, we finished the ping and pong packets and even implemented the login protocol to allow users to log in. Though at this time there's security concerns as the password is sent in plain text, we will implement encryption eventually. So on the server, I started implementing game objects such as trees, and I also implemented the server-side zone code. The tree is created when the setup method in the general zone is called. We then call create game object. Please excuse the French in my comments, however. We can see that players are also game objects. So once someone calls add outside game object, it will add the player to the players list. And yeah, we have all sorts of methods and a player class that determines the player position, player name, and so on. And we have the methods to move between different zones and uh, methods to set positioning. Now, the interesting thing is every game object has a unique ID and a type ID. Now, the type ID is the type of game object it is, such as a tree, or maybe it's a player. And the unique ID is a 64-bit number which uniquely identifies the game object, no matter what game object it is. So that's completely randomized, and it's guaranteed to be unique for the server session. Okay, so whatever that game object is, is unique for the entire server session until the server is restarted, in which case new unique IDs will be generated. This is really useful as it allows the game client to interact with specific objects, such as um, farming. What if we implemented farming and they could grow a particular tree? That particular tree could have uh, uh, attributes such as how, how big it's grown and it can be identified uniquely through the unique ID. So that's a very useful feature. I later implemented movement. You can see the move zone game object packet there along with the unique ID of the actual game object. But there's too many uh, game objects movement packets being sent at this time and that does get resolved later you can see the movement of the players is very flaky and it's not nice so i solved that movement problem with a few changes firstly now if the same coordinates get sent that you're already at we just return instead of update the movement because the actual tiles are integers but the actual uh, movement are floats so obviously if the same integers are being sent that caused the flicker bug because we would jump backwards okay so that's that's now solved I also changed the server tick from 100 milliseconds to 600, so the server ticks a little slower now. Additionally, we've changed the integers to floats, okay, for the X and Y coordinate, which allows for smoother movement on the actual server side of things. And we also have the last uh, move packet send time, which is important so that we don't send too many move packets to the actual game client. Okay, uh, so by changing the integers to floats on the server side, we did uh, help solve that movement problem. It's still not perfect. We later solve it with some more client side prediction, but it's a lot better than it was before. And here is the result. You can see the movement is a lot smoother. Next, I made it so it looks like he walks, but he walks in the wrong direction. After trying to tinker with this, I ended up making a mistake. Now he moonwalks backwards. So that was a little mistake on my part. I then adjusted the code so that it would adjust the rotation by 180 degrees so that he's facing the right way. However, I would later find out uh, during the development of this game that it wasn't a foolproof solution. But we'll get to that later. It was at this stage I started to implement the ability to hold weapons. I didn't have a weapon model at this point, so I just made him hold a tree. And you can see that worked out very well. The wielding of the tree was accomplished 
by essentially creating a new node and then parenting it to the actual bone in the skeleton mesh of the hand. This then ensures that as the player moves his hand, the weapon will follow with it. It is stuck like glue to its hand. Here we can see how it looks when the sword is attached to his hand. It looks like he's holding a bronze sword and it's very nice. Now came the need for customization of the player character. So I split the torso, the head and the legs into separate meshes so that I could see how it looked in the game. And the head doesn't seem natural, but I've got the right idea. We can see that we're now able to swap the heads, the torso and the legs, which will be essential later on when we want to be able to change what armor they're wearing and things like this. So this was a lot easier to do than you realize. Um, you can see the code that's commented wheel model by there and you can see we pass the different torso and the legs. So the simple idea is you have an empty uh, skeleton and then you can just attach the different torso and legs to the bones as you did with the weapon model. Okay, They're commented out in this example but that's the idea essentially. So here is the first torso I made, which if I'm being honest, turned out really bad, uh, but it demonstrates the same idea. So essentially what you do is you animate the torso uh, as you would animate the player, and then you can export just the torso mesh and you can just attach it to the bone and the movement should flow naturally. You can see that my second attempt at making the torso was so much better. That looks a lot more natural and uh, it suits him much better than the previous uh, torso mesh. So this should give you the general idea of what the game network client was like on the server side at this point in time. So you can see it's a very simple login protocol. We switched to non-blocking mode and um, yeah you can see we have a loop that gets called every cycle and we have the ability to handle ping packets and handle packets in general. So that was the original design. And you can see that we repack it straight into the streams. Now you can see here that he's walking diagonally again. So that fix I did earlier wasn't perfect. You can see when we press somewhere to move on the map, the rotation changes, but it almost seems to be the exact opposite side. Okay, so if you, if you move north, it shows you going south west it shows you going east so i fixed that in this part but it took a little time to get that right so this was the first proper test of multiplayer with two game clients so you can see uh the game clients are updated during the movement so the other client will be aware of how our current player is moving and will be aware of how they're moving and so on now the movement is a little flaky at times and sometimes it's smoother than others but this does get improved later on when we implement delta time okay which will allow it to move as it's supposed to uh, regardless of the difference in frames per second and network speeds and there we have it here is the improved version you can see that when we click now it's much more smoother movement obviously we're still walking the wrong way around uh, but um, it, we can see that it's it's improved you can see that it's now much more natural movement there can be a little bit more improvement later on with the rotation because you can see it rotates immediately and that gives a bad look but that can be improved later on uh, with some smoother movement uh, client side prediction and so on later on in the actual development of the game so you can see in this example at this time I improved the actual problem where the character was walking backwards and walking the wrong way around and things like this. So the actual direction of the character now moves in the direction that they're walking in. So that has now been solved and we can see again it's very smooth movement. So this is the final result for this part in the video series. So I hope you really enjoyed this part. Please like and subscribe where you'll receive updates every few weeks on this game development. 
along with other sorts of videos involving programming. So I'm very pleased with what I accomplished in this part. I think it looks really nice and it's a great start to a good game.